Hi everyone, I'm Justin Slates, weighing in at 225, um, course in 5'8", and today we train shoulders and arms, just a light amount of arms, just to keep them toned. Jeff doesn't want me to do it no more. <laughs> um, no, I got a good pump today with shoulders, I mean, I think that's a little bit uh, of my weakness, and you know, we actually just talked about it just a bit ago, and I told, I like it kind of opened my eyes what you said, Jeff. I probably should be training my delts a little bit more. Normally, like on Saturdays, I uh, kind of save for like circuit training with my arms, but you know what? That's a good idea. Just switch it up Saturday and just start doing shoulders, just simple front side raises and go insane, and with a rear delt raise too, and just go higher amounts of reps, just start getting those going. I, I didn't really even think about it. It's kind of odd that I didn't think of that, but it's a good idea. Uh, I started uh, with military press, got that going. Like if you notice, like my training was like, it's like I started at medium weight, then I do a drop weight to get a little burn going, and then I go real heavy. So it's like I, like the thing is, it's not even really heavy, but because like 245, me doing military press, if I was to just start with that, that's going up ridiculously easy. That's simple. But if I'm going down to like 135 and pumping it out, oh, that's that's going to make it really hard. <laughs> that's going to make it really hard. So then I drop back down to 135 for a good burn as well to make that last set that I would consider more of like also a medium level of weight and make that hard for be my last set. And then I went on to that machine press. Well, it's not even machine, it's free weight. Uh, machine shoulder press that one's good and uh, just got a little burn on that for sure then what did we do I did three and one but what was that exercise oh we did side raises for right there um, I started working on those a lot I'm loving it I'm loving when I do the side raises because I'm starting to see more and more striations and it's like whenever you see more and more striations it's just like okay nope I gotta go another rep Okay, not enough. They keep coming out. I got to do another rep. That's how much it motivates me. <laughs> and then what we do, we did upright rows on the cable. Those are good. Oh, and then you see me ever do uh, that uh, dumbbell press. And it was like a regular dumbbell press to the Arnold's. And then you see me kind of do that hammer press. I really love doing those. And like, if you keep going back and forth, go in a real row and I was doing five 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 and I kept doing it until like next thing you know okay maybe I need to lower it down to three reps and I keep going and I was like okay I need to lower it down to one each to the point where it's like okay this is this ain't going up anymore <laughs> and do that and I was like that was pretty, pretty felt pretty good and what we do we did a got a little front raise in again with some cables tone it down at the end and then got a little arms. I always, if you saw me how I was doing it, I was doing it split between a bicep curl to a side hammer curl. And then we did that tricep and we did like one arm uh, extension to uh, just a full dumbbell tricep extension. I like doing that really. You get a good tension doing that. Sometimes you don't, I don't even get, it's almost like I get enough burn not too much just enough and it feels good you know that's what i do it's great uh i haven't put it out there yet but justin's been definitely helping me out a lot i gotta give him a lot of credit uh harris yeah i know i'm justin too right yeah <laughs> yeah i'm thinking my, oh, i'm saying myself in the third person <laughs> oh that reminds me of a seinfeld episode <laughs> No, Justin Harris, man, he's been there for me 100%. You know, I haven't really talked too much about my health issues, and I, and you know, everybody's known that I've had to deal with a lot of stuff, but he's been so patient with me because it was like the first week uh, that we started. It was already a bad week, and it wasn't even the dieting. Um, it was just automatically, pff, I was going in it, and I was having some seizures during the night. And then Friday was a horrible day, and then Saturday was good, and then I was in the hospital. I've been in the hospital already, like, I think three times during this prep. But I've 
even told Justin everything's happening. He's like said, he's like, hey man, do you want to shut it down for next year? You can. I told him, I was like, no, I can't give up, man. I'm gonna still keep going. Anybody else that is hearing this would probably think I'm ridiculous, dumb for doing this. But no, I can't give up, man. I can't. You know, I feel just in a way kind of honored the fact that he's willing to train me, just in, coach me, just in general. You know, so it feels good. Oh, that's how it was started. Oh, that was an interesting day. We had we met up and wanted to train together, and I was like. He's like, I just, I saw, we saw this guy. We saw this guy benching at uh, what, what, Family Fitness. We saw this guy benching, and he was, uh, he got up to 475. He couldn't do it, but he was putting like one of those pads on there, and he would put it like, st like stop at the pad and push it up. So he really wasn't doing a full rep. And I just told him, I was like, man, I got, I got a little itch to do some 500. And he was like, I want to see you do it. I want to see you do it. I was like, you, so you want to see 500? You want to see 505? I was, <laughs> I was like, it was like, it was like, okay. And I was like, you know what? I want to, I want to try something. I was like, how about we do it legs up? And I was like, it's like he tells me, it's like I've never seen anybody do 500 in a gym just at a bench comp. And I was like, okay. I put my legs up, and I was like, get a lift off. I do 500 for a good rep, and then I was like, I, he was probably expecting me to do one. I just had this feeling, it's like I wanted to go again. And I just dropped it down, laid that on my chest for a good pause and just pushed it out up like it was nothing. So it's on Instagram and on his page. And I was like, okay. I was like, I did that. He was like, yeah. It's like, that's, that's pretty badass. <laughs> uh, I felt good that day to do that. And I was, and after that we just got talking and it was like let's do it it's like let's get ready for this comp this year and i was like oh i'm so down for that you know uh i am doing oh that's actually a good thing that i should bring up is you know in the beginning it was like i said i was having a lot of health issues it was try, it was so getting hard to try to get everything rotated like in a rotation and stuff it's not like i was eating bad it wasn't you know going through all that health issues was not eating enough you know and uh he was so i wasn't doing the cardio enough in the beginning because of that and then i when i started doing it i was i was just doing morning fasting 45 minutes and then i got home was like do i really have to do this hit or will this work and then he was like, listen, it was like, it's good that you do that, but I've always had all my guys win if they do this cardio. And like, we talking through email, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna listen to you 100%. I started doing it, and I started noticing a lot more results. Uh, it's even quicker, and it's just helping me with my stamina. I was like, you know what, I'm so glad I just, and I, I listen, you know? Definitely, I've seen them succeed in so much with people on winning. I remember when we were in Kalamazoo and he, uh, what was the guy's name that won that in Classic? He did, either way, What he looked great. He looked great, so. And I was just, uh, I was like, you know what, went for him, and I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. So Ten weeks out. Okay. You know. um, how did you get into the sport box for people that have seen your other videos and stuff? Like, what made you get into the Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Um, when I was 18, you know, I was getting ready for uh, football. And uh, I actually just signed up for a membership at, again on where I got into it. And uh, I was just like, it's like, you know, I love lifting. I got so addicted to lifting. Then next thing you know, I had to get ready for college football. And it was like, I get ready. And next thing you know, I had to get checked for uh, testicular cancer. <laughs> The worst nightmare for men. <laughs> and then I had to stop playing football because it just kept on having health issues like there. And I was having seizures in college. So it just didn't work out. And But the thing is, I could still train. I could still weight train. I was perfectly fine. And, you know, I was, like, getting addicted to muscle and fitness magazines. And I was just seeing all this training. I was like, this is awesome. I was like, what can I do with weightlifting? I wanted to always be a pro athlete. You know, I don't know if I said this before, but when I was younger, you know, I was, of course, I've told everybody, you know, going through leukemia and 
you know, surviving cancer. But when I was younger in the hospital, I was always watching the Chicago Bulls. I told myself I was going to be like Michael Jordan and be a pro basketball player. Then I realized I can't jump. <laughs> and then I was telling myself, you know, I got addicted to watching football. Uh, this is actually the reason why I got into football was um, I haven't really, th I haven't told this on here, but uh, this is how it was. So I used to go to camp, which you want to do when I was younger. It's a camp for people who have, like kids who have cancer and cancer survivors, and it's near Indianapolis. And they were wondering why I became a Colts fan. I met Peyton Manny, came to the cancer, the camp, camp what you want to do to meet all the cancer patients i i met him i had no clue who he was <laughs> i had no clue who peyton manning was but right then i was like saying you know what i'm gonna be a colts fan and i want to be a pro, a pro football player and then next thing you know when i get in seventh grade and i like start watching football i was like hey i know i've met that guy <laughs> and then next thing you know I, like i said i went to college and health issues again didn't work out so you know but I'm willing to fight and push myself as hard as I can to be a pro athlete and whatever I'm in love with. No, when I had, no, when I was six, I um, I was get oh, it's a crazy story, crazy story, and I remember some of it. I was continuously was getting sick with the flu like crazy. My mom was getting nervous like crazy. Continuously go to one uh, walk-in clinic to talk, and the doctors were just being total jerks. That was the only place we had insurance to go. And I just kept getting sick, and they were just the uh, doctors being just jerks and saying, oh, he just has a cold. He's overacting. You know, he's fine. And then my, and then we kept on going. It's like, it's like they just kind of, like, we're getting frustrated with us. And then my mom just went to the next thing and said, you know what, I'm going to pay even extra money. I was like, we'll take you somewhere else. And I think we ended up going to uh, South Bend to one, even though we had to pay for it, our insurance to cover it. And the next thing you know, I got diagnosed with leukemia. And right away, they sent me right to Riley Hospital and we got started like legit the next day. They sent me right there. They got a hold of Riley Hospital, sent me right there. And you know, I just had to go through, see this is the thing, I, my mom explained it to me and I just didn't even realize this, uh, but when you get diagnosed with cancer, you're automatically considered in remission. You just have to go through the treatments to keep you in remission. So I was in um, going through remission for four years, as in with treatments, but I didn't get my porta catheter taken out until I was 12. So in a way, I was going through remission for six years. So what happened was, you know, the seizures came back is because they found a new scar tissue, well, not scar tissue, a new damaged area in my brain. So it's between two parts of my brain. So they would have to, like, if I was to have surgery again, they'd have to peel that back to get in between the brains that are, like, attached. So they said, like, it's not like it's risky, but they can't exactly tell what is in there to what we remove. And then they simply says, like, Justin is like, if it gets to the point where we have to do it, we can't promise that seizures aren't going to come back. But, you know, Justin, we got you under control pretty good just with the medicine, you know, versus, I don't know if I always said it on one of my past ones, but I had 110 seizures within 10 months before brain surgery. That's uh, quite a lot, <laughs> you know. I know there's probably people that have even more ridiculous, but shit, one... One seizure probably in one year is already too much. You never want to experience that, ever. It's horrible, you know? Now, for people to understand, too, like, for people out there who are like, how does kid look ways if he's having seizures? Like, you always get warnings, right? Like yeah, uh, the thing is also, like, it's probably the best thing to do is exercise. You know, it relieves so much stress. You have a free mind. You know, when you have lots of stuff on your mind, you're going nuts. It's just, just doesn't help. And I'm, I brought it up about the medicine that was making me so tired. I just had to, I had to get off of it. I was, uh, it's a medicine that can make you extremely drowsy throughout the whole day. But then at night, don't expect to go to sleep because your mind is racing at a million miles an hour. So okay, it's like I think of one bodybuilder. 
okay who created this exercise all right a dumbbell curl dumbbell curl it's like okay shit well i need to research on what muscle it's making what muscle it's hitting okay next thing you know i think how many muscles are on the bicep i do research like that and then next thing you know i figure out something else and it's like let me put the phone down i'm gonna try to go to sleep something else is on my mind it's like i need the answers and it won't stop and this is how crazy this medicine would be i was uh oh before i had to go to um michigan i think for my uh seizure evaluation that I had in May I did not sleep for 36 hours for how much everything was on my mind that was the worst few time and then uh, you stopped by that time in May um, that was intense really intense uh, in May when I had that seizure evaluation it was like a week before my birthday and uh, um, thank God I was in a hospital and I had that, you know, that's what's crazy. I mean, they have to do it. They have to do a seizure evaluation to determine where the damage is, you know, so they have to induce you into a seizure. So when they induced me into it, um, I stopped breathing for four minutes. And they said, simply said to me, it's like, Justin, if you weren't in the hospital, you would have not have, your lungs already, your, my lungs collapsed in there. They stopped working totally. So they said, if you were in the hospital, you would have died. So this was how it was. It was they told me exact times. I wasn't breathing for four minutes straight. They said that they put a muscle relaxer in me at two minutes in, and it didn't even really kick in or get me to start breathing again until four minutes exact. And they told me four minutes and 23 seconds is when I finally got out of the seizure. I totally went out of the seizure. And then they said for three hours, I did not stop resisting to where I would even hurt. I grabbed onto a nurse's hand or wrist and I squeeze it hard and I accidentally hurt her. I was like, to, after I was like, I told her, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's not like I wanted to do that. I guess like everything was over my head. I was ripping everything off. I remember somewhat, but everything I was doing, I don't remember. That's how ridiculous the brain can take you over with damage that's in there. I was like, I don't know. Let me see real quick. I'll show you this. Can you see it? Can I do this? Well, no. Can you see it? Okay. So you see that right there? Where is that? You see, you can see it bright right there. That is a new area that's damaged. If you see those holes right there, that's two parts of my brain that are taken out. Let's see this side. Shoot. If you see that side, that's just natural. And then you see, like that, it's crazy. That's everything. I know. You don't see. It's just two holes. Just two holes. <laughs> yeah. You know. And that's where they ask you to donate your brain to science. Yeah, I uh, filled out papers to donate my uh, brain to science because you know what? You know my situation is so rare. I would love to put it out there, put whatever they can do to help somebody. I mean, what am I going to use it for after I pass? What? <laughs> it's a brain. It's my, it's my, dude, as long as, you know, people are there and they know I passed and stuff like that, that's what's great about, about it. I would love that, but I would really love to help anybody, anyone, that would not have to go through what I have to go through ever again. It's like the worst. You know, um, it's, it's hard because if I think about it, I can still feel every single pain from when I was younger of having spinal taps. I can feel all the pain from um, the seizures where it got to the point, it gets to the point where I don't have bad headaches anymore, but I start to get really nauseous. But I had a really bad one where I was woke up and I thought I was dreaming and there was blood all over my room and in my living room and I just <sighs> that was a hard day I woke up and uh, my head was killing me my back was just extremely in pain like somebody beat it with a bat and my right quad and 
right knee were hurting really bad and I, I had an idea why is because that one was straightened out so ridiculously stiff to where my right quad get sore and my knee was just in pain almost like it was going to rip apart and um, you know if I looked at light felt like my eyes were going to burn and it was getting really hard because it affects my emotions it's like I get very paranoid I it's like I can't talk to people or I feel like it's like I even feel like people are attacking me I people are gonna say I'm crazy and they they like I get very aggressive people that's not me and it's like I just want to explain to people it's like how I am after that please don't get offended I can't help it you know you know, like I remember I was at my parents' house and I was just resting there and I just heard some noise and I think, I can't even remember what it was. I just got up and I just started throwing stuff and my dad was just, calm down, buddy, calm down. It's okay, it's okay. I, I don't know why, I just couldn't control it at all, you know. And I look at that and it's like, it's like... Uh, not a not a, not a lot of people understand and when it happens for some reason I only trust so many people because it's like I can't talk to people for some reason it really makes me feel like a weak person but I feel comfortable talking to you and my dad like I swear to God that one night I swear I wish you were closer because I just felt like I would only feel safe around you or my dad but my dad was working and I couldn't contact them so it was just a hard day and then next thing you know um that Sunday I just went into my to my parents because like I was going so ridiculous emotional I started hearing a lot of voices in my head and it was because of this people are gonna say I'm insane nuts that's how messed up this area is after seizures it's ridiculous and it was a bad bad day I ended up in the hospital ER and they had to put out of it maybe to calm me down and then I felt normal then uh, it was just uh, maybe like a month ago I had to get checked for cancer <laughs> didn't I tell you about that yeah remember I went into the ER I was babysitting uh, my parents dogs and just thought of, yeah I told you about how I was getting bruises everywhere yeah I was getting bruises everywhere going all over my body I was getting paranoid man I was like I, first of all I was looking horrible it was like bruises on my abs on my left arm for some reason my both my shoulders were pretty bad and my right quad I'm like what's going on and my left nose nostril continuously was bleeding all the time I don't know why it just kept bleeding and of course you know I was pooping a lot of blood <laughs> That was horrible. And then I was like, I just didn't feel right. And I went to the ER myself. And I had an idea of what it was. And they wanted to do testing. Came out negative for any cancer. And what was it? It was the new medicine that Ann Arbor put me on. And it just gave me the worst effects ever. And then I get... Oh, and I ended up hurting my... It took me a month. I, like, smashed my right hand or right, right fingers I smashed them real bad and it took over it, it wasn't healing it also wasn't healing that's how ridiculous this medicine was just destroying my body it was ridiculous it so have a medicine to prevent seizures but destroy my body <sighs> man that's how it, it kind of sucks right you know so then right after I got off of it within three to five days everything went away and healed Stop nosebleed and my fingers healed um my bruises started to fade away it's just crazy you know um, people you'd like to thank them? say again people you want to thank uh you 100 percent you you i want to thank uh my guy joey He's been really motivating me. He competed, and he's doing really good. And, of course, my awesome lady right here. She pushed me really hard. Kate, she's been doing good. She's been exercising a lot. Also, like, I give a shout-out to my guy, um, 
uh, Julian still. You know, I haven't heard from him in a while, but he's still uh, been doing good business at his house with uh, personal training and stuff. He's doing a lot of work, and I see him so dedicated, and always give him a shout out. So, yeah. and of course, I shouldn't. I've already gave him a lot of compliments, but I'm just so glad that Justin's willing to put me under his wing. I gotta give him a lot of thanks. You know, it makes me feel good about myself. I actually was going to try to have him coach me in 2017, but I just didn't think it was right, and because um right after that i like i competed but then right after that i had to get ready for a surgery remember and that's something i forgot to bring up at like because i get people judging me like crazy so okay um, let me put this straight for everybody all right yes i didn't look the best in 2017 for that comp but let me freaking explain all right because it's driving me nuts the whole point was 2017 iron man a warm-up a warm-up comp all right and then i was going to continuously try to keep improve then go to the central then i was going to continuously improve and go to the western but i didn't even know this until you told me but when you qualify you're not even supposed to compete again i didn't know that i didn't know that so i was like you told me hold on i was like hold on man wait you said i can i qualified well well maybe i should just wrap it up and just get the surgery taken care of and then get going next year but then you know things happened with uh, the flooding and just that was a pain in the ass and just couldn't afford it you know but all right my man i'm glad he came down hell yeah